the Broken English Poet is about to come up. So let's get it rolling by bringing up the Broken English Poet. <laughs> A.K.A. Andrew Cole. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's so great to have a birthday. At 8 a.m., first phone calls with greetings. 9 a.m., flowers arrived. 10 a.m., carrot cakes delivery. 11 a.m., Canadian champagne delivery. And then party 24-7. Wow, what a day. But it was last November. <laughs> well, I have received a talking point yesterday via mail from Washington, D.C. So, you know, I, I can talk about today. Now, I can only talk about Hollywood earthquake fault. As you know, there is a skyscraper being built next to the Capitol Records, then there will be a second one. And they found the earthquake fault under entire city of Hollywood. And they panic. At this moment, every real estate agent is working with seismologists for security reasons, or, or sometimes with geologists. And uh, I also hired seismologists with me. And when I go to the Trader Joe, and we go for shopping, and suddenly he alerts me, Andrew, watch, the Vine Street is opening. So we have to go around via Wilcox. <laughs> and we are safe. <laughs> I was so scared of this Hollywood fault that I even brought my seismologist over here for the show. And when stage will start opening, he will alert me. Jump over. It's open. Where is the seismologist? Hello. Hello. Oh yeah, he's there. Now, the the problem is only for the seniors. They cannot afford to have a seismologist. So there is a dog service in, in Los Angeles, and they they train dogs to sniff the the fault. And the the senior is working with the dog false sniffing dogs and suddenly dog starts barking it means that earth is opening somewhere not that cats are, cats are running around because those dogs are ignoring cats at all now this the situation is not so serious as it looks like my neighbor is a, a retired geologist and he knows everything about earthquakes he said andrew don't, don't worry, the last earthquake in Hollywood was 11,000 years ago on the corner of Franklin and Highland. <laughs> now, another one will be here in 2,000 years from now. So I will be retired by the time. I don't need to worry. But he said, he really knows it, that the last active fault under, under Los Angeles goes under the Kardashians' villa. <laughs> now, <laughs> now I, I really, I'm not able to, to, to warn those Kardashians girls about the fault, because I, I never know which one got married, and which one is getting divorced, which, was, which one is already pregnant, or is getting pregnant as I speak. <laughs> but they are, they are I, I, I'm really amazed. They always know that first they have to get married and then they divorce. Not, not in the contrary. <laughs> so let me see another talking point. Uh, oh, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is, my name is Andrew Kolo. I'm a broken poet. Uh, broken English poet. <laughs> no, I am not broken. <laughs> Maybe someday. Uh, now, uh, my career goes back a, a few decades. And 
I started very early, at 7. 7 p.m. it was. <laughs> then, then I had a real good coach. And I don't remember his name, he was a foreign name, of course. But he was Babylonian, and he was extremely uh, cheap and inexpensive. He charged me only 99 cents per <laughs> lesson of, of broken English. So that's why I was very successful. Lately, he met some union people, and they unionized him. <laughs> And now he's asking for hundred dollars for the lesson. <laughs> and I don't want to pay him so much, so my first position in uh, as broken language uh, entertainer will be taken by Arnold the Governator. He's very rich. He can afford to pay hundred dollars per lesson. He can afford it to have a housekeeper working on two shifts. <laughs> Keep the kitchen shift and bedroom shift. I, I cannot even afford it to, to get her for bedroom shift. Now, let me see the talking points. Oh, last time I was here at the show, and I, I was a, one of the guests, and some other guests approached me and said, we recognize you. You are a broken English poet, and we came over just to listen to you. And they came over from far away. And I said, I'm not, not going on the stage, I'm not scheduled. So they say, please, please, we came over to, to listen to you. So I said, if I get on the stage, Joe will kick me out or call police. And I cannot do it. And they said, at least deliver a broken poet to our table. It, it wasn't possible because it was a conflict of interest. The table show and stage show. And <laughs> Joe would insult me immediately. So I couldn't do it. Uh, hopefully they are here. My admirers. <laughs> now, today, when I came over, I was warming up for the show at the bar, <laughs> and the bartender asked me a very personal question, and I answered this question. He asked me why I am doing this, why I am delivering broken poems. By the way, I, I don't have a, a broken English poem to you today, because I, I haven't had the time to break it to the end. It's half broken, but I deliver it next time. And he asked me why I do it. And I told him the truth. First reason is financial. <laughs> Joe pays me so well that now I will be able to afford a nice trip to a beautiful Venice. The nice California. <laughs> then, second reason is my rating. <laughs> my ratings were so low last week, like uh, those of a Jana Air, 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 airline that landed in San Francisco. Nice. Oh. They also have very low ratings. Oh, <laughs> By the way, you heard that they sued the television station over the joke. The commentator joke that the pilots always are flying low, but it didn't anger them so much as he read the list of the crew. And I have the list with me. And I'm not afraid to be sued. <laughs> because I hide my millions in an offshore banks. <laughs> so, and they can take my mother-in-law, and they can stuck with her. So, because you were so nice, you came over for the show. I will read it to you, free of charge. <laughs> the list. John Lowe, Mary Lowe, Lawrence Lowe, Jean-Pierre Lowe, Dick Lowe. Oh. And now, I am untouchable, but, but they can go after, after Joe and take his guitar. But if they do it, don't worry, 
his wife Joanna will buy an even better one. No. <laughs> Talking points uh, from Washington, D.C. Ah, the last thing, government wants me to explain to you that if they listening to your telephone conversations or uh, reading the uh, emails, or even if you are here with your uh, smartphone, they know you are here and they know that you are listening to me, which is not a crime yet. Oh. <laughs> What's happening, they, say, they want me to explain to you that they are looking for terrorists, really. And if you are not, not terrorists, or I am not terrorist, you don't need to worry about anything. So just make it easier for them every day during the lunch time, I dial the number. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Is this U.S. government? <laughs> yeah, okay. This is Andrew from Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I am going to order a pizza. Can you start recording it? <laughs> okay. What pizza? Pepperoni. <laughs> of course with double cheese. Yeah. Okay, you can start it. What do you mean if I am calling you from the cave in Bora Bora? No, I'm calling you from luxury apartment in Hollywood. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Oh, can you tell uh, hello to president? Okay, thank you. So now, just in, or in order to save them so taxpayers money, you can call them anytime you think that it's something important. <laughs> and then they will start recording it. They need, they need to listen to you uh, uh, all the time. Now, but only important things. You don't call them, well, I'm going to the restroom. Because, and please start recording it. Because this is not important. What might be important, like, hello, US government, my mother-in-law just arrived. <laughs> or uh, I'm ordering organic chicken, or something like this. And you will see, next year, your taxes will be much lower. Because they save so much money. Broken English poet, AKA yeah. Andrew Cole.